And the flowers and the goodie bag is presented by H. Ganifo Rohim, also from PBSI, the Badminton Association of Indonesia. So also this double, or this final, did end in two games, in two straight games, as the previous three matches. So all four matches of this afternoon has all been concluded in two games. So let's see what the final men's doubles has got in store for us. And the next match coming up, as I said earlier, finally, the men's doubles with former world and Olympic champion Marcus Kido and his partner Gideon Marcus Finaldi, the top seed in this tournament against the youngsters Silvanus Guy and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamoyo, also from Indonesia, the number five seeds.
And here we have the court officials on to court again for the last time this afternoon for the final match of today, of this afternoon, men's doubles coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Marquesido Marquis Bernardi Lindo, the Vizier, and Silvano Sien, Kevin Sanjay Sukomoyo, the Vizier. And as the stadium announcer said, Marcus Kido and Gideon Marcus Finaldi leading on the two youngsters, Silvanus Key and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamulio. And the umpire here, Mr. Wayana, Indonesia is doing the toss. And it was the youngsters winning it. And what are they choosing? Ah, oh, that was hard to say, but I think they chose to serve. And this is the way to the final for these two pairs. And uh, like you can see, it's been very, very convincing so far for both the pairs. And number one seed and number five seed has made an impressive run to this final. Here we have Marcus Kido in the picture, the former world and Olympic champion from 2007-2008. Here we have the partnership, seed at number one. Their world ranking is 10, but they have been as high as eight. Marcus Kido is 30 years old and his partner, Finaldi, is 23 years old. The partnership started in 2013 and the best result so far was a win in the French Open Super Series. And here we see their impressive win to the final and only yesterday in the semi-final they were a little bit pushed in that last game, 21-19, in just 30 minutes. Seed and the world ranking is 68, and that's actually the highest ranking they've had so far. It's Silvanus Key on your left, he's 20 years old, the taller one of the two, and Kevin Sanjaya Sukumoyo is only 18 years old, and the smallish of the two guys here on court, the two youngsters, and again we see an impressive run to the final, winning all their matches in two games. Not even been stretch. The highest number of points they've given away is 18 in one game. Bayana, the umpire, and the service judge from Malaysia is Mohammed Aziz Anali. The best result by these two youngsters so far in 2014 was to win the New Zealand Open. and a quarter-final in the Chinese Taipei Grand Prix Gold. On top of that, uh, 
they've got a win in Vietnam International Challenge. So they are definitely on their way. And it's a young pair we have to look for in the future. Up against a very, very experienced Marcus Kido, who has won everything there is to win in the game, plus, as I say, possibly an additional 15 Super Series tournaments. But the umpire here gets the players on their way. And on my left, Silvanus Gen and Kadmin Sanjaya, Buka Polio, Indonesia. Kevin Sanjaya, Buka Polio, to serve to Marcus Kido. Loho. So Kevin Sanjaya to serve to Marcus Kido. That is more for what? Love. Yeah, well placed by Marcus Kido. Was lucky on the shot just before. Good. Clipped the tape, Love. got over. The lift was a bit short and he managed to finish with a very good cross court smash. One, and this where we see a lot where three, Marcus Kido is really challenging his opponents at the net. But well done by. Sylvanus here, he just returned the favour. And if you followed our TV yesterday, you saw the semi-final, you saw these two youngsters play, Kevin and Sylvanus. It was a little bit unlikely the way they, their favorite formation, because normally it's the taller and the stronger guy at the back, and the smaller and more agile at the front. But it's in this partnership completely reversed. It's uh, Kevin Sanjaya that really likes to play from the back, and is very good in defense and his attacking from the baseline. And it's this partner, Sylvanus, who's so good at the front of the court. So it's a little bit opposite. That's what you normally would see. That is over. Four, five. Yeah, that's in. Well defended by Akira. Five all. Kevin Sanjaya had Six. a very impressive Five. win in mixed doubles though with Gracia Pulley at the Indonesian Open, the Super Series tournament that was played in Jakarta in, in June, where they beat the Olympic Kevin champions Shang Nang and Sao Yunlei of China in the first round of that mixed doubles event. And what a result it was and what a start to a mixed doubles pair. Seven, six. So surely we will see a lot of Kevin Sanjaya in the future, I have no doubts. Look at that, how quick he is. In the World Seven. Junior Championship in 2013, he won the silver in the mixed doubles. Oh. 
Play by Gideon. Man in the picture here. They had a very, very good run at the All England this year, where they beat Carsten Bonsen and Matthias Bow of Denmark on their way to the semi final. And in that semi final, they lost to their compatriot from Indonesia, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiwan. And uh, what a funny feeling that must have been because uh, it was exactly Hendra Setiawan and Marcus Kido who won that Olympic gold and the world championship back in 2007 and 2008. And very impressive that Setiawan again in 2013 won the world championship once again just with another partner. That was Mohamed Hassan. So very impressive by Hendra Setiawan winning world championships with two different partners. So far, nothing between these two pairs. 10 all in the first game. Yeah, that was going long. And the youngsters have a small advantage. 11 10 up at the interval. Well left by Kevin Sanjaya. Service over, 11-0. Yeah, good play by Kevin Sanjaya here. Service over, 12-11. It's very interesting for this Marcus Kido. He's always trying to challenge his opponents by giving them opportunities to attack him and then if they don't do it well enough he will counter-attack and win the points on that but the very quick and not so tall Sanjaya is very very quick and sometimes he's intercepting shots that you would never have imagined him and that was well left on the baseline confirmation here on the pictures So as you can see, it's modern men's doubles. Very, very fast and furious rallies. Not a lot of rallying. They're very short. It's very much around the service situation, the serve, the return, and what we always call the third shot. It's all about that, getting the initiative from the situation there. Yeah, this is a very typical error by 
Kevin Sanjaya here, not because of him, but that typical area anyone would do, because on the other side is Marcus Guido. And you know that when you hit it, you have to hit it so well to pass him. So very often you tend to go give it too much. And he did so in this instant, and he went out on that sideline. Good serving by Silvanus. So I don't think we have had a rally more than 10 shots so far in this match. It's very fast and furious. And definitely to the liking of Marcus Kido and Gideon Finaldi. Flick serve here. And here we had a small example of that one there and how Marcus Kido is really tempting his opponents, but uh, this time it did not work. Oh, wow. That is so well. Once again, have 18, you tried to play 17. the game of badminton? You know how difficult it is to do that, exactly that. How quickly he got around the head. With just a fraction of a second to, to react. And another good cross-court drive here 19, by Marcus Kilo. 17. Really stamping his authority in this match. 19-17 up for the partnership. And suddenly, three 17, game points has arrived. Point, 20 game point 17 for Gideon Marcus Finaldi and Marcus Kido. The number one seat in this tournament. And despite it was out, it caught Silvanus on the way out, so obviously it was a fault, as you most likely can see here on the pictures. Yeah, touch him on the way out. Well spotted by the umpire. And the first game goes 21-17 to Finaldi and Kido. And the match duration, just 12 minutes. And confirmation here, 21-17. Finaldo and Kido against Ki and Sukamoyo. Second game, level. So, we're ready for the second game here. Gideon serving. Service no one, one love.
Sunday School Squad Four. Oh, that was going wide. Chose to take it anyway, but obviously so easy for us to see it from here. I'm sitting right on that sideline. That's well played by Gideon. Oh, look at that. And that's going long. Good play by Gideon here. Very unlucky not to finish the rally. Well defended by Guy and Sanjaya. Eventually, he lifted it out on that baseline. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Kevin Sanjaya really challenging. Marcus Kilo at the net. So often we see that Kilo is just playing that block. And Sanjaya was ready there, punching. He knew it would come. That was a bit of a simple mistake by Kevin Sanjaya here. He had total control in balance around the head position. And made a poor miss. Yeah, that's bad luck. He was well placed. But going long on that Five, baseline. Three. Yeah, good. Very, very quick again. Jumping, just one jump around the head. Six, and here from the mid-court area all the way across the court and then even smashing cross court. It's really, really well played by Sanjaya here. Bad luck. 
well intercepted by Sanjaya here, but it was going long and that baseline actually way long. But well intercepted so quick. I think it would be interesting if we had someone doing statistics in this match to see what the average length, the number of shots of rallies this match was. As I say, I wouldn't think it would be more than five or six shots on average per rally. Could be interesting to see. Yeah, good work by Gideon. He's such a hard worker. And Marcus Kido need a partner like that. One that can cover him now and again when he's making these rushes to the net. Once again, we don't see many players like what Marcus Kido here tried to do was play that fast lift over the head of his opponent and then inviting him to attack it. But he was ready. But the, uh, the lift went out on that baseline and he was quite upset about it because he was sure that tactic he applied would have been the right one. Just like the first game, 10 all before the mid game interval. And that's short. And this time it's uh, the number one seeds having the advantage at 11 10 up at the interval. Where in the first game it was the two youngsters, Sanjaya and Guy. <laughs> Marcus Kido, he was so convinced a lift was coming. He jumped on beforehand, but he did not, but still recovered so well and had a good chance. He missed. That's what I like about the player. That's what I like when I see him play. He's very adventurous. And he is selling the game of badminton so well to the outside world for everyone to watch it. So I hope you at home are enjoying it just as much as me.
service over yeah, once again played by Kido that push down the line. Obviously not easy to say, but perhaps it was going out of the baseline. Sanjay opted to take it, he made a mistake. And suddenly now is 14-12 to the number one seeds. Two points up once again. So I think one of the players is calling for the doctor. Yeah, it looks like uh, Kevin Sanjaya need a plaster or something for his finger. Let's see. And the crowd here has enjoyed some very good badminton this afternoon. And it's still completely packed. And we've been going on four hours now since the final started at one o'clock. But still everyone is here eager to watch the last bit of badminton of this afternoon. 13, 14. Play. It's tight, but I think Kilo is right, and I think the umpire is right to overrule it. So the service judge, sorry, the line judge here was overruled, and is point for the number one seats, and 15-13 up. Once again, we saw that lift by Kilo. Oh, yeah. You don't do that unpunished in a situation like that, and he knows it. Should never, never attempt it. That shot is coming here. Marcus Kido is just waiting for that. Oh, that was missed by Gideon. That was a golden opportunity. 17-14 would have been a very, very nice lead for the number one seeds, but he missed it and it's only 16-15. Sanjaya obviously celebrating the good fortune. Okay. That was the second time round that Silvanoski was trying that. This time Gideon was there and he was while awake. Look at this, ready for that one as well. Watch out. So can the youngsters make it this time?
They surely can, this rally. Well played. 17 all. Four points away from victory and four points away from a third and deciding game. So oh, very well played by Silvanuski here. Really challenging Gideon. Look at that. And one more. Very well played into that mid-court area. So suddenly the youngsters are up. 18-17, just three points away from extending this match to a third and deciding game. That was very, very adventurous shot by Kevin Sanjaya here. Very adventurous indeed. called in well played by Gideon straight down the middle of the two players both of them so close to the line good call by the line judge here and 19-18 for the experience Despite the fact that they were trying to add on a lot of pressure here on Gideon, he stood his ground well. And it's now setting up two match points for the number one seeds. Marcus Kido and Gideon Marcus Finaldi. First one saved, 19-20. So obviously an enormous amount of pressure on the young Kevin Sanjaya here have to serve to stay in the match. Oh, and he flicked it, he flicked it. How clever, he was so cool. So very, very cool. What a flick serve and what a time to do it. Gideon went hook, line and sinker into that one. Well played by Sanjaya, 20 all. Requires extra points, have to win with a two point margin. And suddenly it's the youngsters having game point. And once again he flicked it. And the youngsters did it, taking the second game 22 20.
and for the first time this afternoon, we have a match going into the final game, and that's men's doubles. Second game lasted 21 minutes. And confirmation of the scores so far 21 17, 20 22. Yeah, Gideon is getting late for that one. Still trying to play the block shot from a very, very low position, and that he failed to do. And the match was extended into the third game. A very purposeful walk by Gideon. Kido lucky to get away with that one. He one. wanted to leave it. He thought it was too short. Changed his mind, played the shot. And got away with it. And a beautiful serve that just clipped the tape. You can see the two experienced players here. They're really rushing the youngsters now. Trying to stress them. Good serving. Look at that, how he's picking up the shot so quickly. Ready again, stressing the opponents. I'm ready, are you ready? Fire one up. Once again, a beautiful serve. But somehow Gideon have to step up in his defense. Look at that, he's, his defensive stand is, is very far back and that's why he's so easily put under pressure. to see such a good support from Marcus Guido to his partner Finaldi. Finaldi's not having one of his best days, I think, but partner is still supporting and that's lovely to see. Yeah, Gideon is going on one of his walkabouts. He's really have to get his game together now. Five, seven. 
and a very good length. Applying the same tactics as Kida would do himself, giving away the initiative now and again. That beautiful lift had a, that one there had a very nice length. And Kido had to leave it and then change his mind, but missed it. And the serve was short here. Follow up by Sanjaya. So quick on his legs. Look at that. Look at how he's following up so quickly. That was a nice variation to the serve by Silvanus. Serving it wide. Oh, he wanted to play too steep. And he played it into the net. Let's see if Marquis Kido can make another run on his surf. There is one. Can he make it to the interval as well? 11 7 up. Yes, he can. And the two pairs are changing ends now. For the first time this afternoon in the third and decided game. Seven. Play. Wow, what a smash. Very well placed by Gideon here down the line. Kept the attack nicely and look at this. Gideon is not having one of his best days in the office. But hopefully for the number one seeds, it will be just enough. Forty-eight. 
Yeah, the young Kevin Sanjaya here adding on the pressure to himself. Look at this, how he's lifting to him. this one here. He could have lifted across for his partner, but he chose to lift it straight. And the smash was coming back on him. Some experience here is having a seven point advantage, 15 8 up. Perfect angle smash from Kido. He's looking mighty pleased with himself on that one. I think anyone would have been. Yeah, well covered by Gideon here. On that cross, had that passed. It would have been a winner, but he was alert. So it's now or never. Well defended by Sylvanus. I think that's going long. I think that's called out. Yes, it is. 11-17. Desperate defense. By the two youngsters, they got away with it. Scored a point, and that's how you do sometimes as well. Good serving again by Sanjaya. So I'm sitting here just waiting. When will that flick serve come again? When does he feel that it's most necessary to do it? Is it now or will he wait? Because surely it will come again. And once again, Gideon was challenged at the net. 13, 17. And as earlier mentioned, I don't think he's got one of his best days in the office today. So there were three points in a row here. And there the flick serve came. He found it necessary to play it now and once again prove to be a winning point look at that wonderful wonderful flick serve 14 17 get in have to watch out now don't go too early
Yeah. Kevin Sanjaya, he broke his racket. Along the way, the frame simply broke. I think that's where it happened in the middle. Yes, look at the racket. He's looking at it as well. The tension in the strings and the uh, racket heads banging obviously did the damage. So, Gideon and Kido is just three points away from victory here. But it's been a very good comeback by the youngsters. They were trailing 17-10, and now it's only 18-14. Can they have another run of points? Anything is possible. Play. wide. Once again we saw that fast lift from Kido. I was setting him up very nicely. What you try to notice is that he's not backing when he's lifting, he's actually going forward and that's the big difference between what a lot of other players would do and then forcing himself right behind that one and whacking it cross court and Silvanus Guy had no answer to that one. So six match points has arrived for the experienced number one seed. And the flick serve is coming as a return of favour. And it's 21-14. For Kido and Finaldi. Here in the picture. Waiting for the prize money presentation. We have the confirmation here. The match lasted 48 minutes. And finale and Kilo won 21-17, 20-22, 21-14 against the youngsters Ski and Sukamoyo. And here we have the match point. A flick serve from Gideon and a drive cross court from Marcus Kido did the damage and the experienced player won the tournament. And here just from another angle. Here we have the highlights coming up. for the prize presentation. And to present uh, the medals is uh, Abak Bodihato of PBSI. And first to the runners-up, the two young players, 19 and 20 years old, Silvanus Guy and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamoyo. And the winners here. 
Gideon Marcus Finaldi and Marcus Kido getting their gold medals. And to hand over the prize, the check is Mr. Nori Shimoe and Joe, sales and marketing. And the flowers is handed over by Papak Yupi Rusimin, also from the PBSI, the Badminton Association of Indonesia. So it was almost like the very small Kevin Sanjaya was completely covered by the people in front of him. And here we have the results, the rundown of the afternoon, and we started off with the women's doubles, Shendi, Puspa, Irawati, and Vita Marisa. The number three seeds, the very experienced pair, won 23-21, 21-13 against Kesha, Nuwita, Hani, Anadia and Devi Tiga Pramatasari, also from Indonesia. That was followed by the men's singles, HS Pranoy of India, winning 21-11, 22-20 against Fiaman Abdul Kulik, just turned 17 years of age. That was followed by the women's singles, Adrianti Fidasari, winning 21-14, 21-14 against another junior, only 16 years old, and that was Buseli Hatawan of Indonesia. That, the mixed doubles followed. And Ricky Vidianto and Puspita Ricci-Dili won 21-18, 21-19 against the US Open and Vietnam Open winners of Mohamed Rashal and Vita Marisa. Finally, we had the men's doubles, as we just saw, where Gideon Marcus Finaldi and Marcus Kido won against the youngsters, Silvanuski and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamulio, 21-17, 2022 and 21-14. I do hope you have enjoyed this afternoon with us. Do join us again for some more actions when we will be showing from the Denmark Open Super Series Premier in October. From myself, Morten Frost, and the rest of the crew, bye for now.
That's a good shot by Rosselli. Yeah. 
So two coaches to support the youngster, keep the morale up, give him some good advice. And on the other hand, you have a H.S. Planoy who's got no coach here. And as I previously stated, I don't think that's a bad idea. It gives an opportunity for the players to think for themselves and really dig deep into the mental side of the game and not having to rely on coaches to tell them what to do, when to do, and all that so uh, I think that's very good exercise as well Service over 12-7. Yeah, Furman really finds it quite difficult to turn quickly enough. Look at this. This is actually third or fourth time the smash is going down to that backhand side and he's still missing it. And it's definitely because he's still too light on it and not used to that kind of power and pace and obviously angle as well. Service over. But H.S. Pranoy hasn't really settled down yet. I still think he's playing some odd mistakes now and again. Not under pressure on that one either. Long in the baseline. Over. But Pranoy, he really knew how important that was. 9 12 or 13 8 up, there's a big difference in the score line. And that's well, well read and well left by Pranoy. Very important for him and for the Indian fans around the world watching this. on the line service over very good smash nine. and if we get that in slow motion will we see how far Furman actually was away from that Pranoy here, 15-9 up. That's one of the things I would like to see uh, about H8 Pranoy. That's 
that backhand he hit there was actually not necessary. He had plenty of time to get around it, but he chose to play that backhand, and that's a little bit lazy. And if he wants to get all the way up there to top 10 in the world, he needs to add on some more pace and pressure from a situation like that. Nice lift. One more. Sixteen. I don't know if I'm mistaken here, but I think today there's a small drift alongside the court here. And Furman is standing on the fast end of the court. And that's why he's finding it difficult to control it on the baseline. And that's what we saw in the women's doubles as well in the first match. That Kesha and Devi was playing a lot of lift outside on that baseline. Very nicely set up by Pernoy here. Playing a net shot back on that net shot really did the trick. Furman was not anticipating that. That one there, that's a beauty. He should have stayed in and made sure that his opponent would not have been able to play a shot like that. Obviously, the lift was too short and the smash was a formality. See, we had the opposite example here. Furman was trying to play the same, a similar shot, but look at how Prinoy, he was in there waiting for it, waited to pounce at it, just in case he was coming over. So seven points up, a very good lead. 18-11 here, 19-11, just two points away from securing the first game for HS Prinoy. The number five seed in the tournament from India and number 43 in the world at the moment. And once again, we saw that lift outside the baseline. Let's see if that's changing in the second game coming up very soon. Got nine game points in total here. Oh, look at that. Beautiful trickery shot here by HS Pranoy. What a way to win that first game. And a very nice surprise. A shot we haven't seen before in the game. And obviously that's where the surprise come in. You save those kind of shots for the right moments.